My sister says she doesn't want her two-year-old son to be around him because she doesn't want to have to explain to him what gay is. She even said that she was relieved she wouldn't have to see him on Christmas. She says she wants to tell my brother that it's inappropriate to act like this, but she doesn't know how. I think her motives are reasonable. I think we should teach children about homosexuality, but it may be confusing if they haven't learned about sex. I also don't want her to say the wrong thing and upset my brother by making him think we disapprove of his sexual orientation. Should my sister suck it up and tell her two-year-old what homosexuality is, or should we tell my brother the truth? Sincerely, the family mediator. Hmm. I want to first say this is so very clear to me, and I'm hoping, uh, family mediator, that um, it'll be clear to you um, the moment I say it. And that is, you do not have to describe sex to a two-year-old to explain that these two people love each other or have decided to date each other. Exactly. I mean, think about it this way. Does the two-year-old have to have heterosexual sex described to him before he understands that his mom and dad are married to each other and partners in life? But I think, Cheryl, both you and I uh, have some other thoughts about what family mediator might really be struggling with. Right. Yeah, I, I think that there are essentially two questions in this letter. One is, how do we talk to young children about sex, whether that be homosexuality or heterosexuality? There's the sex talk. There's, you know, this is what sex is. This is what your body is. This is how babies are made biologically. Right. And then there's the social structures, the relationships that we establish. Before we move on to this other question about, I think my brother is too affectionate with his lover in front of us. Okay, that's a different question to me. Yeah. But I first want to dispense with this idea that, that you need to give like a master class in, in, in sort of homosexual um, sex acts before you can just tell this two-year-old, Listen, your uncle loves a man. Actually, you know? yeah, as you said, kids don't even... It's a very even, simple thing. Right, kids don't even think straight, gay, until we put that on them. They don't. So it really is quite simple. And, you know, I, I do commend Family Mediator for writing to us. And really, I love um, that she says that even though she agrees with her sister about her discomfort about the way her brother conducts himself, you know, with his boyfriend in front of them, that she is concerned about his feelings being hurt uh, should they confront him about their discomfort. So to begin from that place of compassion is really wise because it will serve you as you do try to negotiate this, what's, what seems to be, you know, some complicated territory for your family. Well, that's, I think, the larger question here, which is, is this just about inappropriate behavior that by the codes of this family is, makes people feel uncomfortable? Or is this about what I think is sort of lurking underneath this, which is, is this immoral conduct? Right. To even ask, how can we tell the two-year-old about this gay brother, implies that the gay brother in some ways needs to be explained. You know, this isn't about condemnation or judgment. You know, this letter writer is saying, look, our family accepts that he is gay. He came out to them. It sounds like it went fairly well. But I think that what many of us find, I know this has come up in all of our lives, that we find, hey, actually, I, I am kind of sexist, or I am kind of racist, or I am kind of homophobic, or I have to think a new way about something yeah. to be more enlightened. Right. I feel like, family mediator, one thing you need to do is be honest with yourself. Do you think your brother has behaved inappropriately, or is there some part of you or the family culture around you that really believes that he's behaving immorally? Don't lie to yourself about that. Because one thing that there isn't mention of is, what were the attitudes towards sexuality in this house? And when I see a phrase like, um, you know, they sit in each other's laps, hug and kiss in front of us during family time, I think, okay, well, this is a family where there is a certain decorum. And is that decorum just around the expression of desire, physical desire, or is there also an additional element of it's got to be a certain kind of desire? You need to really think about, before you speak with your sister, how do you really feel because if you are going to be the mediator, you really need to understand both sides before you step into the middle of that. Right. You know, I, I want to point out, too, you know, that, that this very scenario that Family Mediator points out, this, you know, we accept that he's gay, but he's putting it in our face by being so affectionate with his boyfriend. That's a very, very familiar trope. Yep. Now, of course, Family Mediator, I'm not accusing you of talking to us with that kind of bias. But I think what we are suggesting, you know, maybe it's something that you're not seeing 
uh, quite clearly because you, you know, you do have good intentions. You love your brother. It sounds to me like you really do want to accept him. But sometimes we bring our, our unconscious biases to the, to the fore um, without intending harm. And yet harm is, is caused. For my brother, when he came out of the closet, it was something that he'd hidden from himself for a long time. And he was quite, um, he, he was reluctant to share that part of himself mm-hmm. with the rest of the family. Right. That had to do with our disapproval, which he picked up on even if we didn't. And we grew up in a very macho family. And he, what he did was very transgressive to us in ways that we were conscious of and not conscious of. But he knew. So he kept a lot of that part of his life away from us. The healthiest thing in this letter that I can see is that, and it may be overdoing it, but this brother wants to be allowed within the context of this family to express his love for his partner, his boyfriend. That's an amazing thing. Maybe... It is provocative in a way that is trying to test boundaries. That also happens because when you're living inside the closet for a while, when you come out, sometimes there's a real experience of I've figured out who I am and I want everybody else to accept it until you either betray me with the truth that you're bigoted against me and don't accept me or just accept me. So there might be some minor kind of hectoring on the part of the brother. Yeah. But he's trying to provoke a conversation. Yeah. I mean, come on, these are siblings. I think that if this weren't steeped in something deeper, it would be not complex at all. You would just say, geez, what is your problem? Why are you sitting on his lap? And that's the way that we communicate when things are really just what they seem to be. Your brother is trying to provoke a conversation. His behavior is trying to say, this is who I am now, and I'm going to force you to recognize it in a very public way, even during family time. And you need to understand, family mediator, that is in its own way, though it's provocative, a beautiful thing. And I tell you that from the experience of having had my twin brother, who I love so dearly, but I am not deeply close to him, and there are parts of his life that are closed off from me. And it has to do with the fact that deep down he felt within himself and maybe from us as well a certain kind of disapproval or misunderstanding, and we were sealed off from him. And that is heartbreaking because what family needs, all family, are to really be as honest as they can bear to be with one another. So the fact that your brother is doing this, it's a blessing. It's a good act that he's Well, doing. and think about it. Family mediator used that, that old phrase. Her brother came out of the closet which means that he was in the closet all of those years. So maybe he gets to sit on his boyfriend's lap and kiss him for a little bit in front of you all because he had to hide it for all the years that came before. Right. Believe it or not, family mediator, he will relax if he feels that you truly accept who he is. I think some of the histrionics might level off. Yeah, I agree. You know, the, there are that... only so many years you can keep sitting on somebody's lap. Yeah, that's the heartbreaking part about life is there really only so many years you can sit on people's lap. (laughs) But we wish you luck, and I think you have a beautiful opportunity. You ask, you know, should we tell my brother the truth? You should tell your brother the truth. I really do feel like you can be an important link here. Your brother is really pushing certain boundaries, and you have every right to say, I see you pushing those boundaries, and here's how I feel about it. But you have to face the truth of how you feel about your brother, and you have to make yourself vulnerable and say, I'm a little unsettled by this, and I'm really worried that you know, rather than having this be an experience that brings us closer to the truth of who you are and therefore more deeply supportive of who you are, it's going to cause a a fracture in the family and a sense of misunderstanding. And then, family mediator, you're really going to be in trouble. Better to get it all out now. I would even... Um, you know, if you can bear it, talk with your sister as well and say, I've done some deep thinking about the family we grew up in and the attitudes that we have towards homosexuality. And, And while I think we're trying, I also think that some part of me at least feels like maybe I'm not entirely okay with it, and I need to examine that part of myself. And you should, too, because don't put it on your two-year-old child. Mm -hmm. Kids understand love. The rest of it are just tags that we put on it. It takes no explanation. That's right. All right. Onward, upward. We wish your family great luck. Every man needs a We've come.
come to the end of another Dear Sugar podcast. I have important things that I need to tell you. Dear Sugar is produced by WBUR in Boston. Our producer, our editor, is the wonderful Lisa Tobin. And thanks to Jim Brunberg, our engineer. We would love to hear from any or all of you who are brave enough to write. It's dearsugarradio at gmail.com. Thanks.